everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. We've got two teams here looking to find a way to win. It's the Packers coming in at two and three, going up against the Browns, who come in at five and one. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth, where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. We're at the oldest continually operating stadium in the NFL as you're going to look inside Lambeau Field in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Today we've got a matchup here in pivotal week seven between the Cleveland Browns and the Green Bay Packers. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we look at this Packer team as we enter play here. They come in losers of two straight, so they're trying to right the ship here a little bit. They're teetering a little bit, aren't they? And now things could really go south if they lose this game, so they understand the importance of playing well and stopping this streak. Meanwhile, for the Browns here, they've certainly found their groove of late, winners of five in a row. And I think the sky's the limit for this team. They're playing the best football that they've played in a long time. Getting toward the halfway point of the NFL season, week seven is underway on EA Sports. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So here comes the Packers offense now onto the field. And they'll be led out by the man running the show, Charles, their quarterback. Shift together here from the D-line. Three down, three down. Hey, check, check. Hurry up, here we go. Three, 19. Three. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And he will find his man on the outside. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. And the quarterback, he's got some big threats at wideout. And they seem to get bigger all the time, don't they, Brandon? Every time I look out and watch a game, we're getting these bigger, more athletic, acrobatic receivers. We have some today. Second down to the offense, needing five yards. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Finding time. Looking left sideline, incomplete. And it's possible that today the most important group could be the linebackers. Yeah, the second level, as we like to call them, right? Defensive front has to control things, but the linebackers, they do more than clean up. They help create big plays. Third play here, this opening drive as they're up against a third and five. the shotgun he'll look to throw and a quick throw here that's complete two yards is all they'll get on the completion it's fourth down partner i think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level doesn't it it does and the defense was right there kind of played into their hands on now is the packers punter he'll kick it away after a three and out on the opening drive of the game He gets this away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. So here come the Browns for their first drive on offense. And leading him out, their veteran quarterback. Give it to him right up the gut. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. And when this offense is clicking on all cylinders, the running back is in sync as well. The focal point. Runs, catches, blocks, sets a tone for the offense. Second down, nine yards to go. Play action. They'll throw. And he's got his man on the comebacker. 
And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook. Tough to defend because you think it's a go route, and then he breaks it back on the comeback. There's one other thing you need as well. A well-thrown ball. Exactly right. Got a guy who has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route. And here are the defensive starters. In your old position, you get to talk about the secondary. The best athletes on the field, Brandon. Ah, debatable. Well, we'll see how this goes today. I love, I love the way you put my guys down. But you know this. They've got to cover, and they have to tackle. They have a heck of a task in front of them in this game. Here we go with second and seven. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll be brought down right at midfield after a gain of only a couple. Holding offense. So there you go, holding by the offense, and that'll push him back. Changes everything now as you try and figure out what your playbook has for you. Longer yardage situations, tougher to execute and pick up first downs. He'll look to throw. Throws a quick hitter on the slant. That's complete. He'll wind up getting 11 on that one. And that's going to lead to a third down. Quarterbacks like throwing the slant route, but they have to be careful about ball placement. They have to put it in a spot that make sure the receiver has his body in front of the defender. It looks like the Packers have added an extra DB on third down. Back to throw. That's caught inside the 20. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15. Hold on. Defense. And after a nice game, they don't need the penalty. They'll decline it, take the ball where the play resulted. And now a first down following that long game. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he stopped immediately there. Offense. Yeah, that right there will set him back a bit on the offensive holding penalty. And you know who you want to pressure after a penalty like that? The guy who just committed the foul. You want to see if he's going to keep his head down or if he's going to get his head right back into the game. I'd send a blitz at him right away and see if he holds up. And he finds a man with a crossing route. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. That'll be a gain of 11, and it'll be a second down. Cool under pressure right there, escaping the pocket and finding what I think was not his primary target. And some of these guys are just so comfortable getting outside of the, the pocket that they'll do it on purpose. Doesn't even need to be a breakdown. Just I, they move and they know it affects the defense because a lot of times you get lost in coverage in the secondary. And I think you're exactly right. Wasn't his primary target. Found a secondary guy who sprang open probably because of his movement out of the pocket. And this will result in him losing yardage. Back to the three. That's going to go as a loss of a yard and it'll be second down. Sometimes play calls boil down to philosophy. You know you're facing one of the top 10 units against the run in the NFL. So do you decide to keep smashing against them, or do you decide to throw the ball here? They'll get nothing out of that one, and it's going to lead to a third down. But if you're going to pass down here, you better get that in the end zone. I agree with you totally, and as we both know, the field's already condensed. There's just not a lot of space, so you've got to create some by getting some people downfield into the end zone. If you want to throw it short, you've got to have some movement, some room in order to do that. That one didn't work. That run didn't get very far, and I think when you're looking at his dimensions, he's a little bit on the smaller side. He's counting on the big guys up front to escort him in, and they couldn't create any kind of space for him, could they? Yeah, didn't get the push they needed. And that field goal caps at 11 play drive. That's a lot of offense to run to only get three points, but they'll take them. Anytime you can put anything on the board, you run to your sideline somewhat happy. The Packers offense now heading back out onto the field. And a three and out on that first drive. We'll see if they can do better here. They should have a better opportunity because the nerves should be settled now. That first series, everybody goes out a little extra emotion. So now they get a chance to go back out and say, okay, now we're into the game. Let's go play and play as best we can. You almost get a mulligan then on that first drive. Sometimes it absolutely serves that way. You get a second opportunity. Nothing big happened. But then again, you didn't commit any mistakes either. Off you go. 
After watching that play and result, I go back to when we sat with the offensive coordinator, Brandon, before the game and said, how are you going to move the ball running it against the number one defense? He gave us no indication, didn't tip his hand at all. So we have to see how this unfolds as this game moves along. Not too many things get to a quarterback of this magnitude, but I think it's safe to say that pressure can get to any quarterback. Now he's obviously a great franchise quarterback, but felt the pressure, threw it incomplete. They'll set up a throw. Finding a safety valve here. That's complete. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Give him six on the play. And that's going to make it fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping him from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. 12 yards on the return that time. And the Browns will take over first and 10. Now the Browns offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a bouncing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. And they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. I think you have to chalk that one up for the defense there. Someone right on the spot, excellent coverage, didn't leave him enough room to come down inbounds, even though he did catch the football. And they'll run it here. And hit behind the line. He lost the football. It's loose. And they have possession, and they have it at the 38-yard line. They may have the edge on the scoreboard, but that hasn't made them passive, has it? I mean, they've come, they dialed up a pretty good run blitz there. And, and, and Brandon, you know that all blitzes aren't just designed to get to the quarterback and the passer. Sometimes you're just trying to take away every gap, every hole that might be created in the running game. And they did it to perfection and caused a fumble there. Took away the gaps, took away the holes, took away the football. 17 yards on the pickup there. The drive will continue. It's a first down. And the D-line pinching together must be expecting the run. They come out here in the eye. Going to give this time to the tailback. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. So just a long field goal in this first quarter of play. 3-0 is our score. We're back to Lambeau in just a moment. This presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter about to get underway with the Packers in possession of the football. They've got it second and 10 to start things out. All right, now, lucky 56. Lucky 56. They'll run it now out of the gun. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Starting to run into the second quarter, and I guess you can kind of look at it both ways. The offense, they've got to figure out what they're going to do because they haven't scored any points. But if you're the defense, you're feeling great about what you've got going on. The only concern you have, if you get to the half, what adjustments will the offense make to try to defeat you? Going to throw deep for the end zone, and he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. Tremendous field position there and a perfect time to do exactly what they did. Take a shot at the end zone. And they went for the big play. Just on the Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. And he's got room. He's at the 50. He's at the 30. 10. And he'll score. Touchdown, Browns. The defense is doing their best, but they're struggling right now. They'll look for some help from their own offense to keep them in the game.
Roberto Aguayo now for the point after. And oh, it's no good on the PAT. So they can't add on here. And our score is going to stay right where it is. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. And they have to feel like they missed on an opportunity for points last time when they couldn't connect on that short field goal try. And no doubt about it, because they were counting on those points. In today's NFL... Let's face it, that's really a chip shot, right? That's anything inside 40. Yeah, they, they're counting on that going through the post. But we've seen it happen to teams before. Some of the best kickers in the world can miss kicks like that. Can they come back now and redeem themselves? They'll run it now out of the gun. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Just a yard there, so it brings up a tough third and 12. Third down now following the run. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's right, running game, now, you're not doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature and make sure you don't get hurt. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. throw now on first down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. Touchdown, Packers. A big play there. His second touchdown on the season. And the Packers have cut it back within a score. Well, you know he can be explosive, and he's ultra-explosive there on the fly route. And you know how many times we've talked to coaches and we've had quoted back to us, well, you know something? When you execute really well, it doesn't matter if they know it's coming or not. Well, sometimes athleticism beats you as well. He just took off and went. Hey, that's almost like one of your turkey bowl games, isn't it? <laughs> just go long, Backyard. man. I'll hit you. And it worked really well for them. So the lead shaved to two now as the kickoff is away. This will be fielded at the six. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. And last time, not only the turnover, but that turned into six points. They got to make up for that here. You always hear about empty possessions, but some are worse than others. You can have an empty possession, pump the ball away, get yourself set to play defense, but when you turn it over, it changes momentum, and when they take it downfield and punch it in on you, that's a bad possession all the way around. Yeah, but you're hungry to get back out there, aren't you? You better be, because otherwise, it's going to be a long day for you. He'll drop to throw. Quick throw that's complete on the inside slam. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. Quick pass play there on the slant, Charles. Works out well for the offense. The offense loves it. The defender hates it. Hard to get through the body of the receiver to get to the football trying to cover a slant. Looking left side, he's got it complete. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. All right, now, lucky 56. Lucky 56. All right, here he and on the ground they go with a running back. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. Not too many more ideal situations at second and two in order to try and pick up a first down. They ran it and picked it up. They go play action here on first down. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And he'll return it to the 24-yard line. Oh, timing is everything on a route like this. He tried to drive that football into a tight spot. And if you're a little early or a little late, chances are there's going to be someone there. And sure enough, this one's going the other way. Green 39! Green 39! And they'll go with a ground attack here. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. 
And the offense there, the O-line, everybody really on offense, they were just manhandled at the point of attack. Yeah, you could pretty much call them all out, couldn't you? I mean, almost by name, right? That was a very tough sequence for the offensive line. But how about that defensive front creating a new line of scrimmage and creating a lost yardage possibility? And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. Back-to-back -back runs that were stacked up. Offensively, now you've got to think to yourself, do we change blocking assignments? Do we change formations? Do we change looks in order to try and get the running game going? Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. Call it a three-yard game, and that'll bring up fourth down. Well, that's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. Two minutes remain here in the first half. We're back to Lambeau following these words. On now is the Packers punter as he's on to kick it away. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. And the Browns offense back out there ready to take over. Looked like they had something going last drive. Then the interception happened. Will they recover? The memory they need to keep with them is that they did have something going. They were moving the ball on offense, had a nice sequence going. Don't worry about the other part. You can't get that back. Let's go back to what you were doing well before. I thought you were going to say they need to have no memory, but remember the good part, forget the bad. I like that even better. <laughs> the gun they'll look to throw throwing right and that's complete and they get him down but not before he takes it across the 40 yard line we heard them talk before the game about utilizing the intermediate passing game this week it works for them there they move the chains and we saw them work on it in practice as well and most teams take a period at a time to work on different things they put a couple of periods of work into the intermediate passing game, and now we know exactly why. They got the look that they were seeking, and they were able to take advantage of it. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. Now a play fake. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And he's got his man on the out route. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. And now on third down, they'll need to get it to the 36 to pick up the first. And quickly, they get to the line. Back to throw here. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. Play action. They'll throw. He's got time. He's going to fire. And at the seven-yard line, the catch is made. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head Detroit, toward halftime. Detroit. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. First down and goal to go from the seven. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. A great effort there as the first half is winding down. And the Browns add on to their lead. And that'll give them a two-score lead here, but I'm looking ahead. They just want to hold it for the final moments here of the second quarter. They don't want to give up anything on the other side. No, not at all, because if they don't, it almost had the feel of an imposing their will score. And right now, they want to make sure they keep that and tear it into the second half. in two minutes ago in the game, which means that this challenge was initiated by the fellows in New York. And if you're the coach, you're think Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout. And now they get set to line up as we resume action. 
They come out with one back and three tight ends. He'll look to throw. And that's going to be caught for a Browns touchdown. It's the fullback in the final seconds of the first half. And the Browns add six to their lead. That's one of the better examples of clock management I've seen. Whittled it all the way down just about and still put the ball in the end zone. Yeah, just a methodical drive and something really to take into the lockers here. The point after now for Aguayo. And he atones for his miss the first time around as this one is up and good to extend their lead. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. The Browns kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. Very short kick. This will be taken by one of the up men. And they'll be set up with good field position here as he gets this up over the 40-yard line. Thanks, Brandon. And welcome to the EA Halftime Report. Let's take a look back at the first half. The Packers did not have a great showing last week, and it's been another rough game so far. The Browns are keeping them off balance, and that's pushed them in front. All right, let's get it going. Let's roll those first half highlights. Browns with the ball, end of the first. We're going to get a fumble here. He takes off and ends up picking up 24 yards on the play. First and 10, broken coverage here on the pass play. And this will go for a touch. Packers down now by two. Second and two coming up. Completion is made across the middle of the field. And that connection will lead to a gain of 14 yards. The offense will head off after throwing the interception. Browns have it late in the second. Hand off and run goes up the middle, and he'll go in from seven yards out. Browns up now by nine. Still late in the first half. Quick pass is complete, and it leads to a touchdown. That takes the lead up to nine. So that'll do it for us here in Orlando. For the call of the second half, let's hand it back over to Brandon and Charles. Brandon. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This fielded at the two. <laughs> And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. Here's the Browns offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. All right, it's football 101 to know that the quarterback controls just about everything on offense, but a lot of times what gets missed is that the center controls line play. He has to communicate to the guards and the tackles what type of front they're facing, how they're going to block it, and what adjustments need to be made sometimes on the fly as a defense will shift. Give the center a lot of credit because for the most part, he's got big defensive linemen over his face all game long that he's got to try and block and protect his quarterback and create space for his runner. In this case, he did a really nice job of communicating and executing. He's got his tight end on the corner route. It's complete. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. Okay, when the big guy the runs a corner the route, you're asking a lot, no matter who's covering him. Doesn't matter whether it's a linebacker or a defensive back. Yeah. He usually has the advantage because of his body type. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Tough day. Tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. 
They're going to look to throw. Well, sometimes you just have to take things into your own hands, don't you? I mean, the offense is really struggling in this game. They're the ones keeping things going. They have to continue to play at that level. And defensively, it's a nickel formation here on third down and nine. He's going to fire one deep over the middle. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. The Browns send out their punter now, as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. And it's out of bounds. Now we'll see what the side judge says. He says out at the eight-yard line. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance to turn that into points on the offensive end. Can you imagine what the grease board looks like at the half? Because uh, tell me. that's exactly what they printed up. Stop them on defense, get the ball back for our offense, and go downfield and score some points. Now, the last part remains to be seen, but they got the first part done very well. Do people use grease boards, or you mean the magic marker board? Yeah, those two. <laughs> <laughs> They'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. And yet again, this run game just continues to be completely shut off. Completely stymied. I mean, they're trying to get some consistency, trying to find places to roam. It just haven't been there throughout this game. And incomplete here on third down. You know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. That's pulled in at the 32. <laughs> Look at the spin. Balance. It's a nifty return of 29 yards. And the Browns have a short field in front of them now as they take over first and 10. The Packers defense, they ready themselves here. And they'll start this drive with very good field position. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. He's got time in the pocket. Going right side here, and that's complete. He got 29 yards that time. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open down. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. A great play there. His sixth touchdown of the season. And the Browns add on to their lead. Solid job up front. Really just a solid job all the way around to get that one in. That yeah, was well executed, wasn't it? Well blocked, well run. End result, six points. Touchdown. Now whistles and a timeout signaled here by the offense. And that's their first of this second half. Aguayo on for the PAT. He missed one earlier, remember, but this time he gets it to go. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. Yeah, some might have returned that one. He won't. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start the drive from the 25. The Packers offense now. They get ready to head back onto the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Oftentimes, when you're not winning at the point of attack for an offensive line, maybe they're getting out physical. Right, go, Spread go, things out a little bit. Make it more of a one-on-one -on -one blocking scheme. Then you don't have to win it physically. You just have to win it by position. That may open things up for your running backs. Give him three yards on the run there. That still leaves him with a difficult third and eight coming up. Well, I think we know by now that every run is not going to be broken and get all the way to the end zone. But these short ones still have their value. You can still set up your play action and throw the football. You control the clock because you have the ball and they don't. 
and often the physicality sets the tempo for the game. He's going to flip one out here to his running back, and they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Four yards on the pickup, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. On now is the Packers punter. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. This is taken at the 18. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. And here are the Browns now as the offense comes back out onto the field. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. Just two yards to go here on second down for the offense. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking. But the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. Going to throw right side here. Complete. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. And a nice pitch and catch to pick up the reception against man coverage. Both of them read how much yardage they needed figured what they had to do and were able to beat the man coverage for the completion. Throwing the slant pattern here complete and brought down but not before they're inside the 25. Remember how much we enjoyed watching him last week? It's the same thing it's this week. Look same. at those numbers. <laughs> I'd hate to be a defender right now because no matter what they're throwing at him in terms of coverages, he's finding ways to defeat it and even when he's covered, he's not covered. Hey, what is he doing? He's on, what, what's that term they use? He's uncoverable and making, making big catches. Really fun to watch. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blows. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. And this is caught at the eight. A nice pickup of 14, and it moves the stick, sets up a first and goal. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Back now at Lambeau. It's the Browns football, and they've got the lead here as we start quarter number four. They'll come out in the pistol. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Their big tight end, his second touchdown on the season. And the Browns add six to their lead. They had the lead in the fourth, but still passing. Finding the big target for the touchdown. Now that lead grows even more. Everybody gets to join in the fun. You know, it doesn't have to just be the wide receivers catching touchdown passes. The tight end doesn't just have to do just the dirty work inside. He gets a chance to get into the end zone as well. And that PAT pushes the lead up to 23 now. So that drives seven plays in length. And it's capped off by the Browns' touchdown. The Browns' kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now the Packers get set to go. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even oh, exist. He's, he's not a team anymore. I just cut him, all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But so, hey, listen, if some guy, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. shotgun he'll look to throw finding his safety valve here that's complete 
A gain of four on the play, and that's going to bring up a third down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. They'll go to the air here on third and two. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. They give him seven yards on the play, and they do pick up the conversion on third down. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed, picking up the first. Second down now after the incompletion. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball, and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. A good pick up there, a 22. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. He'll look to throw. Wide open receiver complete. A good pick up there of 20 yards. So an excellent throw and an excellent catch there. Zone coverage, which means you just have to find the open areas in between defenders. That's exactly what happened on that play. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll take this one down near the 15. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. Can... And he's going to take it in. Touchdown, Packers. Their big tight end. His third touchdown now on the year. And the Packers get a score closer. Boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails. Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Yeah, play here for a touchdown. I got 86. I got 86. Single, single. Hang on now. 319. 319. They'll look to throw. He's got it. So they convert the two that keeps their slim hopes alive as we're back to a two-score game. Well, it's still an uphill battle from here, that's for sure, but that makes it a two-score game. And now we see why teams practice so much on the two-point conversion, why you have more than one play ready, because you may need multiples to throw out a ball game. There's a great example right there. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And that recipe on their last drive that resulted in a touchdown looks pretty good. So they'll be hoping to do that once more. And it takes me back to when we sat with the offensive coordinator and the head coach. They felt pretty good about their game plan and thought there were some holes in the defense. And they exploited them the last time out. Let's see if they can come back and put together a similar drive. And we'll see if they can do just that. He's played a great game. It continues right there, even with this lead, confident to throw the pass and have the reception made. There's no doubt who the leader of their team is, is there? There's no doubt who they want to ride all the way to the finish. The strategy would tell you, run the football, run the clock down. Instead, they're letting him throw it because they feel that confident in what he's getting done. He's lucky to be getting that one back. After what they've done with him all day long with all the targets trying to go after him, he's obviously gotten smart, and his pride has kicked in. Made a terrific play. And second and ten, he'll look to throw again. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. Oh, incomplete. A turnover would have really helped there. Almost intercepted. Instead, it's just second down. Well, he did almost. Now, whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. That's going to leave him with just one remaining here in this fourth quarter. A play-action fake. They'll look to throw. 
And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. He would have had an opportunity for a big play across the middle, but he didn't have the concentration or the focus necessary and dropped it before he could haul it in. Well, here we go. That extra defensive back in there on third and ten. Got a man over the middle, and it's complete. A pickup of 24 on the third down conversion. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? Oh, so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Go. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or take away. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. This will be caught at about the six. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. They'll run the option left. And this is going to result in losing yardage. They're driven back to the eight-yard line. This will be the eighth play of the drive. It's third and seven. Time for a break. We'll come back to wrap this one up after this. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. And this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. Their dangerous wide receiver. His fourth touchdown on the year. And the Browns add on to their lead. They were still throwing with a comfortable lead here late, and now that lead even more comfortable. And your first thought is... Is there bad blood that went into this one ahead of time that maybe they're seeking some revenge or they just don't like them? But the other thing that always hits me is, are they worried about playoff positioning, right? Are they worried about, do you need enough points in case there's a tiebreaker that comes into play later? And the lead opens up now to 22 points. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. <laughs> and with a new rule, that decision to bring it out will cost him about five yards as he only gets to the 20. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. They're down big here late. I don't know. You just one last drive here for pride. Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge, and someone said, Coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like, who cares? Let's <laughs> get out of here and do something some other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better yeah. as, they continue to, as they continue to move forward. Yeah, probably just want to put this one behind them. Now whistles here, flag down. I think one of the Packer linemen was moving. Offense. So the defense has put them in a tough spot. It's second and long. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. Third down, 15 yards still needed. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. That one goes for 24 yards. They're going to hurry back to the line now. They'll look to throw here on first down. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. If you're a defender, one of the fun things about playing zone defenses, especially in today's football, is that it's not as static as it was in the good old days, meaning you just drop to a point and react into the football. Now you end up with a lot of man-to-man -man principles once you get into your zone defense. In other words, get to your assignment and then locate a guy coming into your area, and then you end up covering him almost man for man. That allows him to make more plays on the football like the one we just saw there. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. 18 yards the game for number 18. 
And they're going to speed things up here. One of the feature points of the end route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and let his receiver wander into some tough territory. If he's late with the ball, he can get his receiver hit and hit hard. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Looking for his running back, and he's got him. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. Give him two yards on that play, and that'll bring up second down. And the offense moving quickly to the line. He'll look to throw. Can't find anyone open. And he just chucked that one out of bounds, out of everyone's reach. Maybe a wise call not to take a sack in this part of the field. It brings up third down. Out of the huddle now for play number nine on this drive. This is third down at eight. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And probably the wise decision there. No one open. He just throws it away. And that keeps the field goal on the table as it's fourth down. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. He had his lone attempt blocked earlier. And his kick here is good. And the deficit falls under 20 now. It's a 19-point game. Well, in the grand scheme of things, it's likely not going to matter much, but at least they get themselves three points closer to respectability. And I don't know that they're going to be a whole lot better about things because they've clearly been outplayed all game long. But hey, no reason not to take the points when the opportunity presents itself. Shifts past him. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. A lot of scoring. There's no doubt about that in this one, Charles. Points, they were not in a premium. They were pretty easy to come by. <laughs> they were, but it was fun, wasn't it? Because both teams finding ways to click. And you know people who love this game. They also love baseball games that are 14 to 11 with three or four home runs mixed in. So for the Browns, they remain one of the hottest teams out there as the win moves them to 6-1. And, and they'll get another road date next week as their opponents will be the Pittsburgh Steelers. Meanwhile, for the Packers, they can't quite seem to turn things around as they fall into 2-4 and four now on the year. And they'll look to get back on track next week as they travel up to Detroit to take on the Lions. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. With that, we say so long, everyone, from Lambeau.